San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. We start with late breaking news on the city's north side. Katrina Weber is live on Hermine Boulevard where police are investigating a shooting. Katrina, what have you learned about this situation? Well, I've learned in the last few minutes that this has become a homicide case. The man who was shot has died. Uh, police found him behind the wheel of this truck here that crashed into the fence of a home here in the 1600 block of West Hermine. Uh, we're in the area near uh, Bassey, Bassey Road and West Avenue. So just to give you an idea, on the north side of town, uh, police had originally gotten calls about shots fired in this area. Then shortly after that, they got the call about the crash. And again, they found a man behind the wheel of that pickup. Uh, he was shot in his upper chest and taken to a hospital. And police say he did die at the hospital. 51-year-old man. Now, police have, are casting a wide net in this area. They're going around. We see them all around the streets of this area, uh, talking to neighbors, trying to find out whatever evidence and information they can about what happened. They say as of right now, they have not even found the shooting scene where this happened. They don't know that at this point. So they are trying to get whatever clues they can about this situation because, again, this has become a homicide case, uh, a shooting earlier this morning now turned into a homicide, and they are at the very beginning stages of this investigation. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, look for more coming up in our later newscast. Thank you, Katrina. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting off in the low 60s. Now we're at 67, but, you know, kind of cool out there this morning. Feels pretty good. Front came through last night, brought some thunderstorms with it. It was loud overnight, picked up some good rain, especially at the airport. That has all since moved out. We're going to see a pretty nice day with some dry air momentarily because by tomorrow the moisture surges right back in. We're at 70 degrees. At this hour, dew point is down to 57 with a north northeasterly wind. And the forecast for today takes us up to 86, which really is a pretty good day considering what we've been seeing with this heat and humidity. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll see those skies clear a little bit. Uh, let's look at the numbers real quick. Temperatures around the area. We're in the 60s and 70s, actually down into the 50s in Kerrville and Bandera. Most of us will make it into the 80s today with, uh, again, those clearing skies. Pollen count is in. Mold jumped up, likely because we did see that rain overnight. 1,380. Ragweed, fall elm, and pigweed all in the low category. And uh, here are the headlines. Here's what we're going to be watching for this week. Lower humidity today. Then it comes right back tomorrow. I think we could see some showers and storms. And then midweek gets interesting. We're going to have a hurricane, it looks like, coming up from the Pacific through Mexico into Texas. Not holding on as a hurricane, but at least throwing some moisture in our direction. And that's going to make for some heavy rain, especially across parts of the hill country. We're going to diagnose that forecast and get into sp some specifics coming up here in just a few minutes. But for now, let's go over to Stephen with a look at what's going on traffic wise. You know, we uh, kind of dubbed this messy Monday, Mike, at least on the roadways. We need to start hashtagging that because there was just a bunch of issues out there this morning. Uh, the big one, though, 281 at Hildebrand. You can see that right now we do have some vehicles moved off or parked off over to the side, and that is because first responders and crews have taken a, a while to get a trailer actually cleared out of that area in the southbound lanes of 281. Earlier, we showed you the scene. If you were with us throughout the morning here on GMSA and the, during the earlier shows, it was just again a mess out there. And the thing that has changed really right now is that that trailer looks like it's finally been moved out of the way. However, we are still seeing some of the residual problems and buildup of the traffic in the southbound lanes right there at Hildebrand Avenue. Taking a wider look, though, it looks like it's stretching back at least four miles to Loop 410. So again, just be cautious and be patient out there. And we do want to also bring your attention right here really quick while we have some time. I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard and 8. 18 wheeler crash there uh, has led to also some uh, delays. It was since cleared out, but we're still seeing that red building up there with traffic moving at 43 miles per hour. Crash just cleared there. 281 northbound at Thousand Oaks. It has been a very busy morning on the roadways. Thankfully, these situations look like they are improving, but of course, we're going to continue to watch these throughout the morning. So stay with us on air and online for the very latest. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Let's look at today's nine at nine. Thousands in Oklahoma waking up to damage after severe storms brought hail, high winds, and at least five reported tornadoes. Power outages are extensive across the Oklahoma City and Norman areas. At last checked, no injuries were reported. Southwest Airlines hopes to rebound today after canceling over 1,100 flights yesterday. They say difficulty with air traffic control and severe weather are to blame. The airline is asking travelers to check their flights before heading to the airport. Over 300 flights have already been canceled this morning. 
Star Trek's original Captain Kirk, William Shatner, will have to wait a little longer to explore space. Blue Origin has delayed Tuesday's launch due to high winds. The new launch is scheduled for Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. The Pentagon says thousands of U.S. service members are still unvaccinated despite the approaching deadline. Those who choose not to get the shot face career-ending consequences. The Pentagon says they are optimistic that service members will carry out their orders. The CDC says 68 million eligible Americans are still unvaccinated. The first ever fall Boston Marathon hit the streets this morning. The race was initially scheduled for April of 2020, but got canceled last year and delayed this year. Roughly 20,000 athletes are competing in the 26.2 mile race. New worries about rising energy prices and what they could do to the U.S. economy. Natural gas and crude oil prices are at a seven year high. Economists say rising prices could push inflation and eventually dampen consumer spending, such as holiday shopping and travel. Nearly a month later, Spain's La Palma volcano is still spewing lava. Over 1,100 buildings have been destroyed since the first eruption in September. Over 6,000 people have been evacuated. Experts say there is no sign that the volcano will calm down anytime soon. It's a first for Netflix. The streaming service has teamed up with Walmart to create a digital storefront for the first time ever with a national retailer. The Netflix section on Walmart's website is stocked with products connected to Netflix shows like Stranger Things and Squid Game. McDonald's is saying thank you to teachers with free breakfast this week. It will come in a classic Happy Meal box. Teachers, school staffers, and administrators can get the meal at participating locations by showing their work ID. And that's today's Night at Nine. And as we just mentioned at the 9 at 9, Southwest Airlines canceled over 2,000 flights this weekend, causing a massive backup in airports around the country. This morning, over 300 flights have been canceled nationwide. We're looking at how San Antonio International is being affected. We bring in Sarah Costa live from the airport with more. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, good morning, guys. You know, the line right now is relatively calm at this point. Just take a look behind me. So earlier we were talking to one of the... Uh, airport employees who said that this line was wrapped all the way. You see that sign where it says B gates all the way down past the escalators to the area where the TSA is located. They said that's been happening the last two days, but right now things have seemed to calm down. Now we spoke with one group of men who flew in from Monterrey, Mexico on Saturday. They said they've been stuck here for three days in the airport after Southwest canceled their flight to Washington for work. They're hoping to finally fly out at 1 p.m. today. Now, according to Flight Aware, the carrier has canceled 300 48 flights Monday and delayed another 303 flights. That's across the country today. Now here locally, four flights arriving have been canceled. One departing have been canceled. So far, that's what we know so far, according to the website for the San Antonio International Airport. Now, the Dallas-based airline has blamed air traffic control issues and weather for its weekend operational challenges. That's all over a thousand canceled flights on Sunday alone. Southwest Airlines was the only airline to report those issues, however. Now, we did speak with one frustrated stepmother who was coordinating a flight for an unaccompanied minor. We freaked out. I mean, her dad skipped the entire line. Like, we didn't care who was standing up there because she's freaking out. She's crying. She wants to go home to her mom, and she's already had one cancellation, so she's being super emotional about it so he skipped the whole line he went up there we've done drug a two-year-old out of bed at three o'clock in the morning trying to catch another flight and we were freaking out again so here locally just today this morning four flights arriving have been canceled one departing and we're still you know just keeping those looking at those updates on um, San Antonio International Airport's website. So one analyst did say a possible reason for the weekend outages may be a work slowdown by pilots who oppose the recent vaccine mandate out of California. Now, the pilots union denied it was part of a job action, again, that has not been confirmed by Southwest Airlines. Now, we did speak to one passenger who was, you know, pretty positive, saying worse things could happen. But so far, most of the passengers we've speaking, spoken to today have not been impacted so far this morning. Live from the San Antonio International Airport, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah.
And speaking of the airport, although the National TSA Canine, Canine Training Center is here in San Antonio, the airport did not have an assigned support animal until recently. Yeah, those traveling through our airport might notice a yellow lab and her handler roaming around. Alicia Barrera joins us to talk more about Sally and her crucial job. Good morning. Good morning. So definitely with the story, there's a cuteness factor because there's a dog, but obviously there's a very important mission for that. We first heard about Sally on Twitter and immediately we wanted to learn more about her and her skills and how she even became a TSA canine. And like any dog, she has a mission and a personality. Wherever Sally goes, Daryl Hagen goes too. Every morning we stop for coffee, she gets a pup cup. Hagen and Sally are partners. We spend 24 hours a day together. She lives at the house. She's part of the family. She gets along with both of our pets that we have at the house. She goes to work. She loves to come to work. Her job requires a high level of concentration and physical activity to provide peace of mind to passengers and employees. The one role of TSA is to help prevent any kind of terrorist attack or any type of attack and, uh, on an airplane and in uh, transportation in general. So the dogs are an added layer of protection. They really help to detect uh, bombs, bomb making equipment, any type of explosive devices that people may bring that want to do harm on a plane. And if she gets too close, Hagen says she's just doing her job and cannot be touched. She will screen passengers and what we call the vapor wake. As the passengers pass us, she searches behind them. They will leave a vapor trail for her to go into and find the, uh, the odors that she's trained on. Currently, no explosives have been detected. As Sally and Hagen have 30 days to get used to their new environment and will later undergo an assessment for certification. She's happy. We're both happy to be here. Sally and Daryl transferred from New Orleans so that Daryl could be closer to his grandkids, which Sally, of course, loves. As for what's next, TSA says Sally will soon have more canines joining her at the airport in order to train and get certified to protect our airports. Nice to have her here. Yeah, and she's so sweet. She looks so sweet, but again, if she gets too close, do not pet her. She's just doing her job. Although she, you want to, I'm sure. I, yeah. <laughs> She's totally. taking her job very seriously. Absolutely. Thank you, Alicia. Thank Appreciate it. 910, about 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Police in Ohio facing growing backlash after new body camera footage shows their encounter with a paraplegic man. The full story next in your morning headlines with David Sears. And we have a winner in our skull coloring contest. Stay tuned to see if your skills got you an iPad mini. In your other morning headlines, a pill that can cut COVID hospitalizations in half and some controversy over the arrest of a paraplegic. Runners had to be rescued off a mountain and a sheriff is looking for the owner of some marijuana and he's offering a sweet deal. Here's David Sears to explain all of this this morning. Good morning. He's uh, he's he's got something there okay. trying to find the, the owners and uh, he's got uh, he's, he's got a trap set for him. Yes, he does. So to speak. We'll have that in just a second. Hey, drug company Merck has a new drug for treatment of COVID-19 and they are asking the Food and Drug Administration to grant emergency use. It is an antiviral capsule and it's called Molnupiravir. The company says the drug can cut the risk of hospitalization or death from COVID-19 in half. That 50% number comes from a study that involves 700 patients. The results were so obvious that the study ended at the interim point. After a month of treatment, just over 7% of people receiving the drug were hospitalized, but more than 14% of those receiving a placebo were hospitalized or died. The treatment costs about 700 bucks for a five day course, but reports indicate it only cost $18 to produce each course. Some police officers in Dayton, Ohio, looking at some serious backlash after they were accused of doing to a paraplegic, but police are defending their actions. The suspect was pulled over by police after they say they saw him leave a suspected drug house. That man is 39 year old Clifford Owensby. Because he has a record, they wanted him out of the car so they could search it. And here's how it went down. They drug me like trash, like like garbage. Yeah, but when police searched the vehicle, they said they found twenty-two thousand dollars in cash. A narcotics canine led them to it. That cash was pretty close to some illegal drugs, but that was not all. 
They also found an unrestrained child. But Owensby says he's a victim of racial profiling and says he's traumatized. The police union is defending the officer's action. They sent out a statement saying the officers followed the law and sometimes the arrests of non-compliant individuals is not pretty. All right, let's take it to Utah. Snow and fog and cold, not exactly ideal for shorts and a marathon run through the mountains. The whiteout conditions made for a pretty dangerous situation. So about a third of the way through the race, it was called off. The Davis County Sheriff Kelly sent out search and rescue units. Alex Michael and his daughter Audrey were ready to run the 50 mile ultimate marathon. Not your ordinary run. Sometimes they run the trails and then service roads, usually just packed with rock and then some paved roads. The vertical climb about 12,000 feet. Alex and Aubrey thought they were prepared. They had run parts of the course before the big day, but then the storm hit. I knew it was going to be cold and I knew there was going to be a little bit of snow at the top. I had no idea what was coming. That did become more frightening as time went on. I don't think we had fears as much as it was just that painful, you know, trudging through knowing we, we, you know, we had to get to that aid station. That little bit of snow turned into a blizzard. The Davis County Sheriff said some folks suffered from hypothermia. They were treated at the scene. One person did need treatment for a fall, but no one was taken to the hospital. And finally this morning, you are looking at stacks and stacks of bags of marijuana. That is about 770 pounds worth of high grade stuff and <laughs> is worth about $2 million. The Florida Sheriff is looking for the owner. So he tried Facebook, posted that they are looking for the rightful owner to come forward. He also says they will get an all expense paid staycation. In jail? <laughs> come and get it. Come and get it. I, you know, yeah. I don't know. He just said it's a staycation. Sounds That's like a sweet deal. Yes, it and does. We, we hate to talk about criminals, but there are some that would probably fall for that. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. We'll As the, uh, officers I know say, they call it job security. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, David Sears. <laughs> they get Thank yep. you. See you in a bit. Justin Horn joining us now, and we have in the weather department a, a setup right now that we have seen before, yep. and it, it could trigger a bit of worry at this point. It can, but what I'll say is that we are expecting the, this heavy rain that we're going to see to maybe not last too long. So okay. there's, there's a window for it, and I think there could be some flooding. Thankfully, it looks like it moves along by the end of the week, and hopefully we get out of this unscathed. Here's what we're looking at right now. These are the observed rainfall totals uh, from last night. We did get some good storms. The airport picked up over an inch of rain. Leon Valley, 0.93. Selma, 0.61. Parts of Bandera County around an inch, up around Comfort an inch. This overperformed a little bit. We like to see the rain. It was a little loud for a, for a time last night, but good to see some of that rain fell over the recharge zone as well. As we look at the radar and satellite, you can see those storms that moved through pretty quickly with a frontal boundary. That has since all moved east, and now we're seeing just a few showers down here along I-37 around Three Rivers. These are pretty light and again that is right along that frontal boundary so it has come all the way through san antonio and in its wake feels pretty good outside 70 degrees at the airport north northeast julie winds at nine and a dew point of 57. temperatures are in the low 60s just get up towards comfort and kerrville 50s earlier 62 lost maple 68 new braunfels Still some 70s as you get further south and look at Corpus out ahead of that front sitting at 84 this morning. I don't know if that front will make it all the way down there. Probably will stall a little bit, but uh, we'll stay on the dry side of things today. Looking at the dew point forecast, dew points could drop as low as the low 50s by this afternoon. Some pretty, pretty pleasant conditions, but by tomorrow morning, we're right back up into the 70s when we're talking about dew points, and it will be very muggy to start your Tuesday, and rain chances also come back into play. There's the storm system that moved through last night. Again, some dry air in its wake. Here's what we're watching down to the south in the Pacific. We've been mentioning this. We've got a tropical storm here. And sometimes, sometimes we can get moisture from the Pacific to work into Texas. This is one of those situations. Winds right now with Tropical Storm Pamela are at 50 miles per hour, gusting to 65. And the latest track with this system is important. It takes a turn. It gets pulled up by the storm system that's up across the United States. This is going to be a major hurricane, according to the Hurricane Center. They think Category 3 winds at 115 miles per hour as it moves near Mazatlan, Mexico. Then it works through Mexico towards Texas, weakening as it does, but we're going to see some of that moisture here 
And when we get some good tropical moisture in across Texas, especially when it combines with a frontal boundary, that means we could see some flooding rainfall. By tomorrow morning, that warm front's back through. We're looking at a few showers tomorrow. Here comes the frontal boundary. And then uh, we see a few showers and some storms Wednesday morning. Then here comes the tropical moisture. This is around Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Shows some good showers and storms across the home country. And then that heavy rain potentially moving in Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. That's a time frame we really need to watch early on Thursday. And we could see some pretty big rainfall amounts. Right now, it looks like the heaviest of the rain will be centered across the hill country. Could that shift a little bit? It could, so we need to keep a close eye on it. But right now, San Antonio in line, maybe one to two inches with those bigger totals to the north and west. And when we talk about rain chances, I think our best chances again are Wednesday into Thursday. Still some chances on Friday too as a front comes through and then the weekend looks gorgeous. 30% chance of rain Tuesday, 90 degrees. 89 Wednesday, 40% chance of rain. 60% chance Thursday morning, heavy rain possible. Front comes through on Friday with some rain chances and the weekend. There's the payoff. Highs in the 70s, lows in the 50s and 40s. We'll be right back. And this morning on KSAT.com, a new online challenge asking people to detox from social media. Good luck with that. An iconic holiday event returns, plus a new spot to enjoy cocktails and comfort food over at the Pearl. RJ Marquez is live with the stories trending this morning on our website at KSAT.com. RJ, how are you? Good morning, guys. Yeah, good luck with that. This social media detox <laughs> challenge, um, that'll be interesting. We'll get to that one here in just a bit. But let's start first with this new spot to hang out at the Pearl, as if you needed another reason to go to the Pearl. It's amazing there. Three Star Bar is now officially open across from Hello Paradise. Cocktails and comfort food. That's the idea behind this new spot on East Grayson Street. The owners say the bar's atmosphere has been designed with nods to vintage food and drink memorabilia. Appetizers include things like whiskey and maple glazed meatballs, deviled eggs, and you actually have me at whiskey glazed meatballs. I'm good right there. Maybe just whiskey. Uh, they also have some main entrees, including hamburgers and sandwiches. Chef Josh Calderon is the man behind the cuisine. He previously ran the kitchen at Cookhouse as the executive chef. So pretty cool stuff there. They just opened this past weekend. So. I just tried uh, Best Quality Daughter at mm. Pearl yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Two thumbs Always up. Always some interesting things going on there. Yeah. 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 Quite Take a few choices. Yeah. <laughs> like a variety. All right, guys. So here's an interesting question to everyone, including myself. Could you disconnect from all of social media for an entire month, guys? Absolutely. Could I disconnect from Steph for a month or <laughs> from social media for a month? Both. Um, Max is over there shaking your head. I, if you follow Max on uh, social media, probably not. <laughs> Max well, has already got the jitters. <laughs> <laughs> the shakes. Um, yes. Um, well, okay, get this. If you are able to do this, you could get paid. All Homes Connections is looking for people to join the social media detox challenge. So here's a bit how it works. So you'll spend five days tracking your mood while using social media like you normally would. Then you'll delete all your social media apps for 25 days, including on your phone, tablet devices. All Homes Connections will provide an app and a task sheet that will that you will work on for 25 days. When that time is up, you'll share your experience <laughs> with a short write-up or video. And one lucky participant will have the chance to win $2,500 and a care package with prizes like camera. We also have more details on this on KSAT.com. Would, would you share your experience on social media? I guess. I don't know. Done? So it's not cold turkey. They want you to delete the apps. They yeah. just want you to delete the apps. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, interesting stuff there. Check it out on our website. Okay. So maybe while you're on social media detoxing, or not on social media detoxing, mm -hmm. uh, you can head up the road and check out the Trail of Lights in Austin. Yeah. So this event returns to Zilker Park from the end of November, basically Thanksgiving weekend to New Year's Eve, December 31st, the 57th annual Trail of Lights will be drive through only again this year due to COVID-19. The Trail of Lights will still have more than 2 million lights, 90 lighted holiday trees, and more than 70 other displays and tunnels. It is pretty amazing there. General admission ranges from about $30 to $40 per vehicle, and dash passes are available. That includes early admissions, box of holiday cookies, and water. And of course, we have much more information on KSAT.com. One of the cooler things in our area to check out during the holidays. And if any of those other displays pop up between now and the holidays, of course, we will let you know Absolutely. over there at ksat.com. Yeah, yeah, definitely, guys. So Thank you, RJ. Yep. <laughs> right now it's 928. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. 
and you have submitted a coloring to our case at school if you have you could be the winner we're going to announce who takes home the ipad mini in our next half hour but first an important day in the lgbtq community after the break we speak with the human rights campaign about national coming out day Night 32 is an important day for the LGBTQ community, the 33rd anniversary of National Coming Out Day. It's a day of celebration, but also a day of remembrance for those who had a tough time coming out. For more, we bring in an advocate for the LGBTQ plus community, Senior Director of the Human Rights Foundation, Ellen Kahn. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first off, can you explain what National Coming Out Day is for those who don't know? Sure. Well, every year on October 11th, we celebrate LGBTQ people and create opportunities for us to tell our stories and to tell people close to us more about who we are. And it was uh, established in 1988 on the first anniversary of the very large March on Washington, which occurred in 1987, when hundreds of thousands of LGBTQ people came to the Capitol to say we're here we expect more from Congress in terms of protecting ourselves and taking care of our community. Ellen, someone watching right now may be struggling with their sexuality. What advice would you give them? Well, for folks who are struggling, it's often out of worry about whether their friends, family, coworkers will accept them and still love them and support them. So the most important thing is to connect with other people who, who do want to support you, who have your back. There are lots of resources and communities, both online and in person, where you can find folks who support you and validate you and actually can help you navigate the very uh, often very difficult process of telling the people closest to you uh, who you are. And Ellen, we've done a few stories about this, but maybe a rundown. What resources are there in San Antonio for the LGBTQ plus community? Sure. Some great starting places would include the Pride Center of San Antonio, which has a lot of support services, as well as uh, the ability to refer folks to programs in the area. There is a PFLAG chapter in San Antonio, which is especially helpful for parents and friends of LGBTQ folks, but also supports LGBTQ people. And then the Fiesta Center, which is specifically for LGBTQ youth. All right, Ellen Kahn from the Human Rights Campaign, thanks so much for joining us live. Thank you. Have a good rest of the week. You too. Thanks. Well, this week, an exciting one for space travel is happening right here in Texas. The Blue Origin launch was set for tomorrow morning and then Horn about six hours away. But because of the weather, there has been a delay. And Max Massey joins us live in the studio to break it all down. So go ahead and tell us the reason for the change. Good morning, guys. First off, I'm going to blame Justin Horn for all the weather situation. Uh, no, to be completely honest, not going to lie, we're very excited. Um, you know, my photographer Robert and I, we were set to go to Van Horn this morning. We were set to leave dark and early. We were set to go out live there. But then yesterday we got that email and everything got changed up. So here's the reason. We got the email that read, due to forecasted winds on Tuesday, October 12th, Blue Origin's mission operations team had made the decision to delay the launch of the new Shepard launch, the NS-18. They're now targeting Wednesday, October 13th for the launch. Obviously, space travel, always amazing. But this launch also has Captain Kirk. Yeah, that's right. 90-year-old William Shatner will be on board. Now he's going to make history Wednesday, boldly go where few have gone before while aboard Blue Origin's New Shepard. 11-minute ride right to the edge of space, about 60 miles above the Earth's surface, comes just two months after the first successful Jeff Bezos owned a space flight with 82-year-old Wally Funk. Shatner, 90 years old, also set to become the oldest person ever to go to space. And he's going to hit weightlessness in zero gravity for about four minutes. It's amazing for William Shatner, Captain Kirk, and all the fans out there. Also amazing for space travel and science, but it is remarkable for the community of Van Horn. A great partnership between Blue Origin and Culberson County, Almore ISD. I actually spoke with the superintendent who tells me what an inspiration Blue Origin and this program has been for their students. We introduced this vision of collegiate and these jobs in these three key areas. And just it, it just happened this way, but they call and say, hey, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna bring students in to tour our operation. And so, uh, you know, we had, we had controlled numbers and then we got a few area schools and we took students out there. 
So fascinating to hear the superintendent talk about what the company has done, just the idea of going to space, what it has meant for Van Horn, his students, and really so many people in and around town. Guys, it's so amazing for the community of Van Horn. Superintendent was telling me all these amazing stories. Kids seeing the launch, seeing the welding, the scientists, all the workers out there realizing that this could be their future. Uh, obviously, Blue Origin to become such an integral part of the Van Horn community. They're giving grants, or really just helping kids out. And imagine being a middle school or a high school student and seeing a rocket launch right in your community. Right there in your backyard. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Inspirational. Absolutely. So glad they're right here in Texas. Thank you, Max. I know. All right, good to see you, my friend. Right now it's 937, about 69 degrees. Let's look outside with live cam. Those temperatures are climbing, but not a whole lot. Not, not too bad. And, and, you know, they are having to delay the launch a little bit, but we just want to make sure William Shatner is safe. Nothing, nothing. We want <laughs> nothing to happen to him. So that's why they, they are very cautious about the weather, and that's why they're delaying the launch there. Hey, let's look at the rainfall totals from last night. They were pretty good. We got over an inch at the airport. 0.93 Leon Valley, 1.03 Bandera County, 0.31 in New Braunfels. Big number was there at the airport. The showers and storms blew through, and now we're looking at some drier air in place and some really comfortable temperatures. 68 in New Braunfels, 62 Comfort, 62 in Bandera, 72 right now in Uvalde. And there's a look outside. We still do have a few clouds trying to work through, but I think we'll see a lot of sun this afternoon with lower humidity. And then as we get into tomorrow, humidity is back. It comes back quick overnight. Some showers, maybe a couple thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. And then Wednesday and Thursday is a time frame we're keeping a very close eye on. Tropical moisture from the Pacific streams in. We're going to get some heavy rain potentially in spots. And there could be a little bit of flooding. And then by the weekend, some great weather. Here's the forecast for today. We're going to forecast 86 for the high. Mostly sunny skies, northeasterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll be back in just a few minutes to talk about those rain chances and where we think the heavy rain might be. Guys. Quick update, Justin. Right now, we are starting to see traffic moving. They've got most of the southbound lane still closed due to that big rig accident, accident that happened around 3.30 this morning. But one lane of traffic is now making its way in the southbound lanes of 281 at Hildebrand. So slow progress. They're hoping to have this wide open uh, before we get to the lunch hour. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. Fire is one of nature's four elements, so candles are very important for any ofrenda. The glow of the candle is believed to help guide back the spirits to the world of the living. Placed along the altar's bottom level or entrance, they create a welcoming path for your loved one. More are usually placed around the altar to not only illuminate, but to honor the souls of the forgotten. Maybe a great, great tia that you never knew wants to pay you a visit. But don't burn the house down, so keep one of these around. And over the past couple of weeks, KSAT has been accepting submissions for our Hispanic Heritage Month Skull Coloring Contest. And we've got a winner this morning, nine-year-old Trinity R. Let's take a look at her submission, and there it is. Very Great nice. job. Trinity won a free iPad Mini. Details on picking up your prize can be found online at ksat.com. I love all the pinks in there. Congratulations. Great job, Trinity. Right now, 940, about 69 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A lot of sports headlines this morning. <clears throat> yes, that's game two. David and RJ are back with that after the break. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Interesting football weekend. My poor Longhorns lost to Oklahoma, but Justin's Aggies did pretty well. They upset number one ranked Alabama. Cowboys continue to roll over anyone in their path. David and RJ here with a breakdown of the weekend. Woo! We got, yeah, a, lot of, we got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> look, look at how he's. David's got a lot of notes. I, I mean, saw him in the newsroom. Talking he's about working. this. So, so let's get to it, shall we? <laughs> let's, let's do it. Start Cowboys. With the Cowboys. Here we go. Big win yesterday. Mm -hmm. Dak yeah. Prescott, 302 yards passing. The Cowboys had 200 yards rushing. They had 500 yards. I don't know how long. There we go. 
I, this is just this first half was eh, not that not that great. They kind of come. This that. was nice. He had CD <laughs> Lamb right there, a nice catch. I look. Here's the deal. Yeah, when dude, the Giants whoa, lost wait. like 20 guys, I think that yeah, they, this, if the Cowboys didn't win this game, then uh, this is there'd very be more scary problems. right here. Though mm -hmm. this is head to head and watch mm -hmm. him. Yeah. This is Doug Jones and trying to leave the field, and you see one of the Cowboys even goes over there and tries to help hold him up while the trainers get over. That was just that was flat out scary, and then that was that was a touchdown that uh, got him tied, and then it was it was Dak. And Dak and Dak and some Zeke. Look at that. This play. was nice. Look this was a really, really nice play. Then, Wasn't Zeke just hurt the like five seconds ago? Yeah, he <laughs> wasn't that hurt. That was Troy Aikman <laughs> trying to tell you, oh, he's not gonna come back yeah. in the game. But um, Troy, where'd you get your medical degree from? <laughs> he didn't. That was his problem. There's uh, a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, I always right. Oh, and then we had a little yeah, scuffle yeah, here. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the Giants and Cowboys. Tummy. Hey, you gotta love it. Oh, punching. Giants, Cowboys, Whoa, get you rivalry, NFCs. Uh Cowboys roll here again. Trayvon Diggs also had another interception. They're calling him Dion 2.0. Oh no, now five. Five straight games on. with an interception there, and uh, Cowboys look good. Again, they struggled early on. I think it was more of their own mistakes. A couple yeah. of fumbles there by Dak. Well, but. Dak threw the ball. It got tipped, and the guy yeah. picked it, so yeah. that was kind of weird. But then, then he Easy. like inside the five, and he fumbled the snap. <laughs> like, oh, what's that? So anyway, all right, so that's that win right there for the Cowboys. Cowboys so let's move on. at New England next. All Boom. right. Hey, speaking Texans. of New England. Texans. <laughs> okay, Texans <laughs> lost. All right, let's move on to college. I'm sorry, Texans. Davis man. Mills had a nice game, but well, yeah, Texans lost. Yeah. I'm sorry. We got to get to this one. In the Bam. Quarter. Let's get to the wow. big one. Let's get to, let's get to Justin. Okay, Whoa, if I, we just stick, keep within 30, look at there. Go ahead, Justin, give us something. <laughs> hey. <laughs> an an accident. Not a whoop, not nothing? Come yeah, on. Yeah, the, the college weekend was, what? I would say, a little bit more exciting than the NFL weekend. What a win here by AM. and wow. They were coming off two straight losses. Get this one here. Zach Calzada throws for three touchdowns. You thought he was out of the game. Thought, yeah. yeah. Was, Dr. Troy should have called that out of the game, but he came back. <laughs> he came back and was like, man, oh, man, oh, man. And you, you figured – all the Alabama fans and even some a &M fans are going, okay, th this lead at halftime is pretty good, right. Yeah. but can we hold it? Can we hang on to it? And the second half. Yeah, Bama scored 21 straight points, took the lead, and A&M drove down look, the look field. The, look, look at the people Very on nice. the field. And good that's going to cost them $250,000, but you think <laughs> they care? I take it. I think they're Ah, because yeah. it's a fine oh. when you, when, <laughs> yeah, when you run I think the field good, like yeah. that. But how about those Aggies? Here's the thing. Alabama's no longer number one, as you mm -hmm. would expect. They dropped all the way down to number five. five. Wow. Yeah. Mm, yes. So, and a and is back in the top a and back in the top 21. 25, but uh, Bama's still so. kind of in the driver's seat there. So, yeah, but big win there. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge win for Jimbo Fisher. First time an assistant of Nick Saban, former assistant, has beaten him. That's pretty awesome. It ended, right? yeah. ended an Alabama 19-game winning streak. Yes. They've had two of those. They won 19, lost one, won 19 again. Mm -hmm. So I mean that that's huge for AM. That right. that may catapult them into uh, into a different All right. level. But On then to again, we Stephanie, said that about do you want to walk well. out of the room? She <laughs> yeah. won a couple just, games in I'll a row. Just leave. <laughs> and we catapulted them into a new level until the second half. Yeah. You know, I, look at this. That's the opening play. That's the first play of the I game. Know. Yeah. That was okay. I'm all right with that. <laughs> Are you? After the first quarter, <laughs> Stephanie just turned it off. Uh, yeah, Horns no, up 28 to 7. Uh, for whatever reason, Oklahoma came out. It came into this game just flat. Eight, the Horns are running all over them. Bijan Robinson, I think, co look, Coach Sark, you had one job. Just give the ball to Bijan the entire second. Just That's give amazing. the ball to Bijan. Absolutely amazing. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, wait. This is nice Oklahoma, too. the 11 o'clock start must have got them. They must have been out late. <laughs> Friday night or something. They were like, wait a minute. They didn't show up till. But here, here we go in the fourth quarter. All right, yeah. so let's figure this all out, right? So mm -hmm. right, we got to the fourth. This quarter. play is amazing. Yes, this was the uh, touchdown that ties the game up. Mm -hmm. Watch this catch. That's yeah. that's like this is unbelievable. There's no, mm. there's like one blade of grass between the green and the white, <laughs> and that's it. And it was green. Yeah. So that was a touchdown. So then this comes back, and that that's a touchdown. Yeah. OU actually takes the Answered, lead. Right Horns there. come back. Right. And then OU's just trying to go for a field goal here at the end. Trying to set up and, for a field uh, goal. All of a sudden, just boom. Yeah, the gone. Gates are open right there. It was 41-33 to start the fourth quarter, <laughs> and they end up winning. Mm. Oh my! Yeah. So Texas fans are a little little distraught today. Yeah. Thank you. you. Anybody okay, go to class somebody? today? You think? <laughs> Nobody. Maybe not on class. both sides. Yeah. A and M. I don't know why. A and M. Texas. Texas like going to home. My God. And UTSA. <laughs> real quick. UTSA game. won this game. 
We don't have time for UTSA. No, we don't have what? time. <laughs> okay, we mentioned no. it. We mentioned uh, it. UTSA goes to six and zero. Oh. Frank Harris, huge wow. game, six touchdowns there for the former Clemens High School how about alum. That six touchdowns. Beat how, up how are Western the runners Kentucky. not ranked? Yeah, beat yes. up Western Kentucky. Yeah. They ranked. They, they got twenty two votes. So, so they, they, they doubled the number of votes they got last week. And they and play at home this week against Rice. If they I keep it going, coming. they may crack that top twenty five. Yeah, getting close. Getting awesome. close there, Roadrunners. Oh yeah. man. Let's yeah. rather talk about UTSA than what happened with the Longhorns this weekend. It was only. A historic collapse, Steph. <laughs> but anyway, David, RJ, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you. Hi, if Justin. You still you celebrating. Such a nice person, Steph. I would rub it in, but you know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> thank not going to do that. I couldn't get a whoop out of you. I mean, no, it, whoop. There it is. Oh my, <laughs> it was. It was <laughs> awesome. Whoop. There it is. <laughs> Man. Wow, I didn't even think about that. That didn't work out so well. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying not to gloat. Okay. Thank you, Justin. But it was uh, it was an amazing weekend. I got my AM socks on. I posted on social media. You can check it out. Okay, uh, radar and satellite here. We uh, we do have a couple showers down to the south and east of San Antonio. That is a long frontal boundary that moved through earlier that brought the rain that we saw overnight. Some good rainfall totals as we showed you earlier. There still are a few showers hanging on three rivers down to Beville and Kern City. And that's where I think we'll see some rain over the next couple of hours. After that, probably rain moves out of here and we still do have some clouds here in San Antonio. We're done with the rain here. 70 degrees at the airport, 73 stints and 63 Cali, 67 at Randolph. And we've got a northeast Julie wind, which is driving in some of that drier and somewhat cooler air. 64 Boulevardi, 68 New Braunfels, 72 Divine, 67 in Hondo. And as we zoom out some, the warm stuff is still down to the south out ahead of the front. It's 84 on Corpus Christi. The front will try to get close to them today, but the for us, we're on the back side of it, and yeah, it feels pretty good. 63 Kerrville, that's where we were in the 50s earlier. Dew points have fallen off into the 50s, and I think they'll fall a little bit more before they build right back up tonight. So this is short-lived. We got dry air, pleasant conditions, but by tomorrow morning, dew points are back in the 70s, and we're getting some deep moisture back in place. This is the storm system that drove the front through last night, but as we look south, what I think we're really going to have to keep our eyes on is what's going on in the Pacific. Now, a lot of times we don't worry about the Pacific hurricanes or tropical storms really affecting us, but there are times where we can get some of that moisture to cross over uh, across Mexico and move into Texas. This is one of those cases. Winds right now with tropical storm Pamela are at 50 miles per hour. And the track with this storm uh, curves it towards Mexico as a major hurricane, by the way, 150 mile per hour winds and brings that moisture into Texas, coinciding with a cold front. And that's why we're concerned about the threat for perhaps a little bit of heavy rain. And here's what the future cast is showing. Warm front moves north tomorrow. We get some showers and storms. I think tomorrow it's isolated by Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday. Then we start seeing a little bit more widespread rain. Here comes the front. Here comes that tropical moisture coming together. It looks like Wednesday night, maybe Thursday morning. That may be when we see some of our heaviest rain. And there's going to be some pretty good rainfall totals, I think, especially across the hill country. Places there could see four or five, maybe six inches of rain when it's all said and done. We're still kind of working out exactly where we think the heaviest rain will be. But at the moment, it does look like the hill country is sort of the favorite area. San Antonio certainly still could see some decent rain out of this as well. 30% chance of rain Tuesday, 90 degrees, 89 Wednesday, 40% chance of rain, 60% chance Thursday, especially in the morning. We'll get another small chance as the front comes through Friday and then a great weekend. 70s for highs, 40s and 50s for lows. And a quick look at the roads before we head out. You guys have a great day.